my name is Alana Maddie. I'm a musician, a sound designer, and most recently a Twitch streamer. Lately, a lot of musicians have been turning to live streaming, whether just to reach a larger audience or because gigs are a little bit scarce at the moment. I wanted to put together a quick start guide to show you just how easy it is to get started streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or even on a private streaming platform without having to sacrifice your audio quality. Uh, please know that this video is aimed primarily at musicians. If you're interested in learning about overlays and streaming ins and outs and artwork and alerts and all of that stuff, go ahead and skip to the next video. This video also assumes that you have some sort of external audio gear, whether that's just a USB mic or an audio interface. Uh, if you're planning on just streaming directly into your laptop mic and camera, you can also go ahead and skip to the next video. That being said, let's jump in. The first thing to do is follow the links in the description and download Reaper and OBS or Streamlabs. Personally, I use Streamlabs on my PC and it just came out for Mac. I find it to be a really nice skin on OBS and just makes things a little bit easier to use. But if you want to go old school, you're more than welcome to just download the regular version of OBS. Reaper is an incredibly affordable audio software with a $60 license or an extensive free trial that you can use until you're comfortable paying the licensing fee. It's incredibly powerful, it's super easy to use, and the best part is you can run it on a potato and it'll pretty much still work. If you're on a PC, you'll also want to go ahead and download Replugs, and if you're on a Mac, you'll need to grab Loopback. Once you've done this, open up Reaper and double click twice on the left hand side of the screen to add two new tracks. You'll also want to make sure that your audio device is set correctly, be that to your USB mic or to an interface that has your mic and or instruments plugged into it. Head to Preferences and Audio Device to make sure. Set your inputs to what they should be, turn on monitor and arm recording, and you should see a signal come in if everything is hooked up correctly. You'll need to have each track record armed and monitoring in order for it to send to the stream. Next, hit view and turn on the master track. Click on effects and find restream from the list of options. If you don't see restream as an option, make sure that Reaper is finding the plugin file by adding its location to the VST plugin paths in preferences. In the plugin window, choose Send Audio and then Local Broadcast. Next, we have to make sure that Streamlabs or OBS can see the plugin files as well. For that, you'll have to go to Program Files, Steinberg, VST Plugins, and drop them into that folder from their downloaded location. Don't worry, Mac users, we're getting to you in a minute. You can now open up either Streamlabs or OBS, whichever one you prefer to download. Either way, you need to hit the plus in the source window and hit add audio input capture and name it something that makes sense. Set the device to something not actively being used or make sure that your computer default input isn't the mic that you're using in Reaper, otherwise your sound will be doubled. You can go ahead and delete the default mic input and then click on the gear in the Reaper audio track and hit filter. From the list, you wanna pick VST plugin after that, you'll get a drop down menu where you can select Restream from a list. If everything has worked correctly, you should now see your Reaper input lining up with your input in Streamlabs. If you don't, check to make sure that your plugins are in the correct places and that you've enabled all of the aforementioned preferences. Okay, Mac users, for you, you'll most likely want to use a program called Loopback. This will allow you to add Reaper as an audio source and then simply set that as your input device in OBS. Unfortunately, while this is much easier than the PC option, Loopback does have a cost after your free trial has ended. Now, for both Mac and PC, you can hit that plus button on the source to add a video capture device and set it to whatever device you happen to be using. I've linked a couple of reliable options down below that are pretty budget conscious without being total trash. I personally have been using the Razer Kio up until recently, but if you're on a Mac, you'll have to go with a Logitech as the Kio isn't supported for some unknown reason. Make sure that your camera audio is disabled and you're pretty much ready to stream. The final step is to add your unique stream key from whichever source you're choosing to stream to. Click the gear in the bottom left, hit stream, and then choose your preferred service from the dropdown. On Twitch, you'll need to head to the creator dashboard, preferences, channel, and copy your stream key. On Facebook, go to the specific Facebook page that you want to be streaming to, hit publishing tools, creator studio, and then go live. On YouTube, it's a little bit awkward. Personally, I had better luck just Googling YouTube stream key. Whereas if you go through YouTube and go to go live stream, you actually have to select stream later and eventually you'll get a pop-up. Make sure that you delete the scheduled stream unless you actually plan to use it at some point. The last thing I wanted to touch on is some easy things you can do to up your audio game. 
Reaper comes with a lot of plugins that are actually pretty robust, such as this EQ, which you can use with one of the many presets provided that suit you best. And don't forget, you can toss a high pass or a low pass filter to eliminate those annoying hums and buzzes from your house or apartment. Because I do sound design and music professionally, I've invested in Isotope, which is a super powerful set of tools. If you can manage to get it on sale, it's well worth it, but definitely not necessary as you start out. Another quick and easy trick is to add a channel just for your reverb. I use this free one from Akon Digital, which I've linked below. All you have to do is turn the dial to find a tone that you like and then pull the setting all the way to wet. Now go to any of your other tracks, hit root, and then send and select your reverb channel. There are multiple benefits to managing your reverb or delay like this, one of which being that all of your instruments can be sent to the same reverb, which adds congruency to your sound. It also means that you don't end up losing that crisp forward tone on your main track because it's drowning in reverb. You essentially get both a nice forward tone and a bit of atmosphere at the same time. The last tip is to add a limiter on your master track. This will help stop you from peaking and lift your levels to a nice listening volume. I have mine underneath Restream here by accident. It should come before in order for it to be sent to the stream. Sorry, I was too lazy to go back and re-record my screen. And that's it. Those are the basics that you need to start streaming music on whatever platform you choose, while still being able to EQ and affect the sound that you're sending as would happen at a live show. In the next video, I go over some extra things that you can add to your stream, such as overlays, images, and song requests, so go and check that out if you're interested in learning more. Also, it's worth noting that this isn't necessarily the right way to do this. It's just the way that I've found the easiest in my experience. Lots of music streamers use Ableton or other audio software, and if that's your preference, then go for it. I like Reaper because it's easy to learn and it doesn't cost anything to get started. Either way, I hope you give streaming a try, and if you like, go and check out some of my streams if I posted links to below. Good luck!